Uh, the question is how to get a job in game development, specifically as a gameplay engineer, which is something I know a bit about because I've helped place uh, probably dozens of students at this point. And I've also gotten myself placed into a few jobs in the games industry as well. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to show you the three steps that you need to take in order to make this happen. Oh, by the way, please excuse my voice. I have a mouth injury. So first things first is you have to learn how to make games. Now, I would recommend you try to learn how to make the kind of games you want to make because there are many different kinds of games that you can make in this world. So you can be making a board game, for example, which is a coding game, or you can make a mobile game, which is usually a C-sharp architecture, Unity kind of architecture, or you can be specialized in Android or iOS development, though that is increasingly less common. Or you can do like a C++ game development in either a third-party engine like Unreal Engine or in a custom engine like uh, the Call of Duty engine or Rockstar engine. So basically what you want to do is figure out what kind of games you want to make because these are all very different kind of situations. If you want to make mobile games, then probably the best thing to learn in terms of technology stack would be Unity. If you want to learn something that's more AAA like Fortnite, obviously use Unreal because that's available. If the engine to make the kind of games you want to make is not publicly available, for example, let's say you want to make Call of Duty and there is no Call of Duty engine that is publicly available, then you should just go with the closest choice, which in this case would be a C++ third-party engine such as Unreal. Very important distinction is when you are going to learn how to do Unreal, you don't want to learn how to do Unreal scripting, which is called blueprints. That is for designers and it's a separate skill discipline. So don't waste your time learning how to do that. I mean, of course, you need to know how to do it a little bit. But really, the core competency is to be a coder, right? So you should be doing coding, not scripting. So be mindful of that, because I've seen a few students make that mistake before. So basically, you go to YouTube and you start to watch a video like, how do I make a simple game in Unreal Engine? And you do this again and again, just trying to make simple games. You might think, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to make something unique, creative, innovative, um, going deep on a particular project? And this is a bad idea. You want to instead make a few brief, short projects that are very, very limited in scope because eventually we're going to be trying to prime ourselves to build portfolio pieces. A portfolio piece could be a completed game, but it is usually unwise to make completed games as a portfolio piece. There are better ways to make a portfolio piece. Ideally, really, a portfolio piece is just a tech demo that shows a core competency. And to make a full game that is released on the store and has reviews and player base, this is kind of going way above and beyond and it's, it's often a waste of time to kind of go in this direction when we could instead be building up more core competency uh, displaying uh, portfolio pieces. So we'll talk about that in a moment, but as you're still on your journey of kind of learning how to make these games, I just want to stress that, you know, don't go deep on any one particular game. Maybe spend one or two weeks maximum on any particular game project that you're trying to make. Ideally, you go to YouTube, you learn how do I do this thing, you follow a tutorial, you kind of add your own little spin to it, just try to extend it, try to understand it, and then you're done jump onto the next one. Eventually you'll start to build the confidence to kind of make something. And what you want to do, ideally for a portfolio piece, because now we're gonna start transitioning to making those portfolio pieces, is you want to make a iconic like little slice of an existing game. Again, this is not a place to express your creativity. This is a place for you to express your competency. So one common example that I always recommend is if you want to apply to Sony Santa Monica, the creator of God of War, then you should do maybe like Kratos' axe throw, where he throws the axe and then it comes back to his hand. This is an iconic little piece of gameplay, nice short snippet. And if someone were to play this little demo you make, it would maybe take five minutes 10 minutes max, right? It's a quick little demo where maybe you walk around an empty map and you throw it and you hit some people and then it comes back to you. The question I often get is, hey, should I make my own art and music and all that other stuff for this game to show off my coding? And the answer is absolutely not. You should be um, doing the things that are your core competency on your own 
and everything else, you should try to just get the best version that is available to you. If you want to become a good painter, then these days it's kind of a waste of time to be really good at making your own paint. These days, like everyone will just go to the store and buy paint. So it is like a waste of time to become a good paint maker. Likewise, if you want to be a good marathon runner, it is like a waste of your time to learn how to make a good shoe. Of course, a good shoe is an important part of being a good marathon runner, but if you can outsource it, you should. Um, and just focus on the core competency of being a good runner, or in this case, being a good coder. Likewise, people will ask me, hey, should I make my own game engine? And the answer is a question. The question being, do you want to be a game engine engineer? And if the answer is no, then don't do that. That's a waste of your time. You shouldn't be spending time to do something uh, extra, right? Uh, is a good game engineer going to, like, let me say it like this. If you're good at making game engines, will that help you become a better gameplay programmer? Probably. I mean, they're close enough that I'm sure there will be some degree of overlap in skill. But still, that doesn't mean it's a, the best use of your time. You should be prioritizing building that core competency rather than building out an adjacent, uh, an adjacent uh, skill set. So, yeah, no, I would not recommend building your own engine as a gameplay programmer. I wouldn't recommend building your own art. And I wouldn't recommend doing graphics programming either. That was another question I got recently. Should I be learning like HLSL and these graphics coding languages, DirectX, etc.? No, you shouldn't. You should be working on gameplay engineering. That's the focus of a gameplay engineer. And if you're applying to a large company, then the likelihood of somebody doing both of those things is very low. You will have a specialized gameplay programmer and a specialized graphics programmer, if at all, because... You know, it's unlikely you're going to have maybe like an engine programmer. These days, more and more, the studios are transitioning to third-party engine development. So you might have a tools coder, but someone who's like making the engine from scratch, like it, it's just very unlikely. So I would say just prioritize on the skills you're actually going to need, which is in gameplay engineering. That would be gameplay engineering. So that's what you should be doing. Uh, so basically, you build out a bunch of these portfolio pieces, and maybe you want to have like two to four on your website, like the best ones. And you put this onto your website, use Wix or Weebly. I recommend Weebly. That's what I use. And just do a little video that shows a demo of how it works and what it is all about, like what you did. Again, people care a lot about the graphics in these videos, and that's why we want to download like great graphics from the store like a high fidelity version of kratos rather than you know trying to make it on your own in blender because you're not an artist right so why are you wasting your time with that just download the best you can and you know if it's publicly available then you know just credit whoever's work you're using but again focus on the core competencies which are the gameplay engineering so basically you make this video and it's unlikely they're going to download the game. They'll probably just watch the video and kind of get an overview. Maybe they'll download it to check it out, but really the, the video is, is sufficient enough. And then what you're going to want to do is take a look at your resume because a lot of game dev, like is like to get the interview is just, do you have a good resume? Do you have a good portfolio? And when it comes to the resume, uh, one of the issues I have a lot, Laura, the issue that I face with the students I work with is they have like no experience or they just have like something totally unrelated like they were on the badminton team in high school like okay it's not going to help you get the job so what you want to do instead is start padding that resume with your portfolio pieces as if they were work experience so for example if you recreate the kratos axe throw then just like somebody would write you know the work experience that they did for mcdonald's you will write as the title like created kratos axe throw in unreal and then when someone would explain how they cooked the french fries at mcdonald's you will say i you know implemented this version in blueprints and i optimized the code using this like you go through all the details of what you did for this project and you basically just write it up as if it was an actual job but of course it's kind of just like self-employed it's your it's your own project but if you don't have any real work experience then you want to say experience you did which is real work but just a self uh you know self-motivated work 
So basically, you would have a resume with your portfolio pieces, and if you do have any work experience that's relevant, then you will put this at the top, of course, because you want them to see that. And if you chose to spend a lot of money to go to university, then you can include your degree as well. So then what you do is you begin to apply for the jobs, right? And I would highly recommend you to do practice interviews to the extent you can. I would recommend the book that I wrote called Get Into Game Dev. I will link it below. But this book has a lot of example questions that were asked on previous game play programmer interviews. The best strategy is to go to the interview, and if you fail a question, be studious, write it down, study it, learn the correct answer. Because if you come back to this job and you apply one year later, it is very likely that you will get maybe the same question, if not like the same topic, because they will want to still, they need the core competencies year after year. So there's only so many ways you will like ask the question of like, what's the difference you know, like when to do this versus when to do that, right? So I would highly recommend you be studious in this manner. And that's what I did over many years of doing interviews. I started to make my own study sheet and that's essentially what my book has become. So you can check it out, all proceeds to charity. And we're halfway to our goal of, of saving a human life. So if you want to check it out, it's linked in the description below. But besides my book, I would also recommend the book called Head First Design Patterns. I think that one's very good. I would also recommend Cracking the Coding Interview for general interview practice. And once you've read that, I would recommend going to Leet Code, which is a website that has a lot of interview practice questions. Uh, it's a really a great place to just strengthen your chops when it comes to uh, algorithms development. So basically, this is what you will do. You will read the book, you will do the practice questions, and then you'll start to do interviews and you will fail. But you will learn over the process of doing the interview and eventually you will succeed. So the next question I get is, hey, if I'm struggling to get a job in game development, instead of becoming a coder, should I become like a quality assurance person, a game tester? And the answer is no. If the core competency is present in the role, do it. If not, don't do it. So to become a good game tester is not the same as to become a good coder. So it is a waste of time. Don't do it. If you can become a good uh, game, like if you want to become a quality assurance in test, which is kind of complicated the role, but what that means is you're somebody who is using code to test the game then this could be a good role. So yes, I would say go for that. But if you can't find a game programming role, then just do a role outside of game programming. But that is still programming, so you can become a good programmer. So for example, if you want to be the Call of Duty coder, which is C++, but you can't get the job in game development, well, let's say this, if you can't get the job in Call of Duty, then go to somewhere else that is C++ game development. Don't do Unity game development for another studio because this is kind of, I mean, maybe you can, but it's hard to transition this way. I would actually recommend you just become a kick-ass coder in C++ and then transition into coding C++ and game development. Because here's the thing, like it's hard to find kick-ass coders. So if you're a kick-ass coder in C++, then they will hire you. You might just have to take like a pay cut. But the reality check is the game dev industry is like not a very good um, industry, like in terms of like career fulfillment, like you will get more money and work less hours, better work-life balance in other industries. So if you are so fortunate as to land a job as a C++ coder, at another game, at another industry, then maybe you will say, oh, I don't actually want to transition. I didn't realize how amazing it would be to just do this and I find enough joy here. And then you will, you know, fortuitously never have to transition into game development. But if you still have the passion, you say, I want to spend less time with my family in favor of this uh, passion, then you will make the transition and now you will have amazing coding skills rather than being good at video game testing, which doesn't really have the same upwards mobility, you might say. Not to say coding is above testing, uh, but 
it's just typical that someone who is a game tester will go into game production as kind of like a jumping off point. It's less common they will become game coder or game artist. So yeah, I think that's basically everything I wanted to say. And hopefully I answered all of the questions. If you have a question for me, just give it to me in the comment section below. And again, I forgive, f sorry for my voice. I have a, a, an injury. So yeah, basically I will link my book down below. And if you're interested in kind of help or guidance to just get your start as a game developer, then I will also link the course that I taught at Stanford for two years. Um, that is basically just an intro on how to get started in game dev. It's pretty self-taught, so it will be a loose guiding framework for you to get started. But the important part there, again, is you're making a new project like every week. You don't want to rat hole into one project for like a month. You need to be focusing on the flywheel, on the iteration, on doing something new and then something new. Uh, in order to optimize the learning. So yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Give me a question in the comment section and have good luck in your journey.